Hey guys, I'm back with my video response to episode 228. And just before I start, sorry if there's a crappy sounding, um, my voice is sounding crap in this. I'm using the microphone on my Logitech um, C910 webcam. Do not buy it, the microphones suck. And um, yeah, I'm running another OS reinstall. Restore, reinstall. <laughs> um, got Windows 7 up and running. So hopefully this will solve all my computer problems. But anyways, get up and close to the camera there. So let's get into it, guys. Good to hear you got the uh, phone upgrade pipes and congratulations on your new job. That's awesome. Um, I have the Six String Bliss app, of course, because I want to listen to the teardown section. Now, the thing is, in Australia, I'm with a carrier called Vodafone, and they suck. They suck monkey's balls. They suck monkey's pole, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's been some huge controversy about this service and everything like that, so I cannot really use the internet um, when I'm out anywhere. I can. It's just, like, mega slow. So I can't listen to podcasts or anything like that. So I have to wait till I get home so this thing connects to my Wi-Fi so I can use the internet, which sucks balls, sucks major balls. But, you know, what do you do? Um, you know, the internet in Australia isn't quite up there yet. It's, it's the slowest internet in the world, one of the slowest. So hopefully they'll do something about that. But um, anyway, yes, yeah, so I always listen to the teardown on this when I get home on this with my... Uh, so I can hear you guys' voice very clear. And um, it's great. But um, yeah, I wish I could use my phone everywhere else. But I'm thinking about getting an Android because this thing's just stuffing up on me left, right, center. So anyway... Let's get past phones. This is not about phones, guys. Not about phones. Uh, sad to hear about Guitar News Weekly podcast, but I guess if you're not getting a lot of people listening to it, it's um, probably not worth keep you know keeping the podcast going. And I understand when when PT and I um, did the podcast, it was it was kind of hard to to get sort of the same time where we both could record and, you know, one of us would be weird hours of the night or morning and things like that. So it, it was kind of getting a little bit difficult, uh, I guess, with people overseas and things like that. But um, I think, you know, just a podcast, you know, every now and then would be cool, especially for us regulars, you know, on the forum that, you know, really look forward to hearing that. And perhaps you could just mention a little bit of guitar news uh, in, the, in the Six Room Bliss episodes. It would just be one story you know, every now and then. Just something, something to keep it going, so you know people don't forget about forget about the podcast. But um, you know that's just the way it is. And PT, that's um, sad about the rival band making it big. Screw them. Wednesday heroes all the way. That's what I say. But um, you know, I guess that's it. You know, I, I've got a lot of interests as well, and a lot of the times I wish you know, I really. For the major thing with me is I wish that I had not started um, getting into electronics, music electronics. Because for even years, I didn't even pick up the guitar. Like, I didn't even pick up the guitar that much now either. Like, all that, you know, you just get involved in things and, and other interests take over your main passion. And for me, it's the guitar. Even vocals now, like, I, I focus mainly on vocals, but it doesn't give me the same drive and passion that guitar used to. So, uh, you know, I know what you mean, but I was, I was into motorcycles, um, you know, then I got into, I was getting into mountain biking and things like that, but yeah, it's, it's weird because, you know, you really, really need to sort of, you're right, focus on one thing to be really good at it. So yeah, I, know, I understand where you're coming from. I'm going to try to dedicate more of my time to playing guitar and to learning things a bit more by ear and, um, learning a little, learn more music theory because I, most of the time, I don't even know what I'm playing on the guitar. You know, I, I know it's shapes and everything. I know, you know, yeah, how how you link sort of, you know, leads to rhythm work. You know, you have to know your rhythm and chord progression before you can play that leads and that sort of thing. But I can't put it all together, and it's so frustrating. Like, on paper, it, it sort of makes sense, but putting it into practice is just confusing. So, you're right. I think um, with a lot of us, if we want to get good at one thing, we've got to really focus on that one thing and try to put the majority of our time into that. And um, yeah, you know, because hard work does pay off. So, but anyways, so guys, yeah, so let's talk about strap locks. Okay, so I've got strap locks on both of my electrics. Here's one here my um, Ibanez RG, whatever this is, 321MH. Yes, I love Ibanez RG guitars, I've got two of them. 
they're actually my only electric guitars. Um, I put strap, strap locks on my guitar straight away. I think I wrote down there on the forum, but when I first started playing guitar in, band, in a band, and I had this, this crappy sort of copy of a Strat, it was a piece of shit, but anyway, it was, it was my baby, it was my, my first guitar. Um, and I had a cheap strap with like some composite leather sort of ends on it. You know, so we're playing and we're going nuts, and all of a sudden the the part the strap part on the horn there, top horn, just just splits, and my guitar goes down to the ground, and I just caught it with my right hand, like just caught it. So you know, it it really did. It would have paid to have strap locks, but back then, you know, I was poor, it's poor teenager. So you know, it's just easy. You've got your little button thing here goes inside, as you can see, the strap lock looks like a regular kind of strap button. And you just grab it, it's in there, it's locked, it's not going anywhere, push a button on top, it comes off. It's as simple as that. You know, and I think they're a great investment. A great investment to have. You know, cheap, cheap 30 bucks, you get some strap locks and yeah. Guaranteed your guitar not to fall down. And if you don't if you don't play standing up then yeah, you don't really need it, but I, I get them anyway because every now and then I try to I try to I try to play standing up because the sensation is completely different from playing sitting down. But um, I just don't don't want to risk it. Don't want to risk it. You know, guitars cost money. We save up for them. They're our passion, our life. Why would you risk it? So anyway, um, let's get down to the basis of this episode. Weird guitars, weird, wacky, strange looking guitars. So what I've got here in front of me is the Guitar World Buyer's Guide from last year, or well, it's, it says this year, but I bought it last year. It's got the chicks on there, Playboy Bunnies. And are they Playboy or are they Penthouse? Playboy Playmates. So this is just this is just a, a buyer's guide. It doesn't really have any articles in there. It's just all the different guitars laid out, different amps and things like that. You know, which is which is one of the things I like about because this is just a gear. There's not really much about artists and things like that. It's just gear. So if you're a gear junkie, like most of us are, you know, you get a lot of gas. Don't buy this because then you'll end up buying more stuff. But anyways, let's get some weird guitars. That was some weird guitars, and that that reverse V, which I'm looking at on the on the homepage, that that is odd. It is really odd. Um, yeah, I think there's some new guy who came on the forum so he's got one, which he got for. A, for a steal for something like 700 US dollars, which is crazy. But, um, you know, I guess they're just doing something different and they came out with it. And, it, and you know what it, what it really did? It was probably marketing. That made people look at Gibsons. That made people like, what the hell is that? What kind of crazy, you know, idiots designed this thing? But it worked because now it's grabbed our attention as well. So marketing geniuses or absolute idiots, you decide. So let's get to a couple of things in this magazine here. This is an Aria. Gold Rush South Africa World Cup guitar. Where are we? Can't see my. There you go. Shaped like a soccer ball, and I believe it has its own speaker in it. I think. Maybe not. So anyway, that's a uh, that's up there in the weird category. But whoa, my computer just sort of crapped itself. And um, go Windows Seven. Here's another one that's kind of weird. This is a Zach Wilde coffin style guitar. You can see it. There you go. Shaped like a coffin. Whatever tickles your fancy, Mr. Wilde. We've got a few more in here that I'll bring up. Now, this is weird. The Icon Customs Arachnoid 1. Check this thing out at the bottom of the page. It's got a composite body, so I guess like fiberglass. And that is one weird guitar. So, just when you're thinking that's it, no, they've got another model called the Necro. Necro, like necrophiliac, what the hell are they trying to say? I don't know, but there it is, right there. Oh, that's better. Kind of weird, I can see the appeal to it. Um, pay for that, that Finnish metal band that won Eurovision a couple years ago, what they called, had that song Hard Rock, Hallelujah. I can't remember their name right now, but that, that certainly suit them, they dress up as monsters. Uh, here's a whole page of weird guitars. This is um, Minaric guitars. Minaric guitars have got some funky, funky body shapes. Check that stuff out right there. You know, taking taking the basic shapes to the extreme. Uh, what have we got here? Well, one more example of kind. Of, they're not that weird, but um, they are different. 
Tragen guitars, sort of out there with the horns, you know, something different. And yeah, but you know, I kind of like weird guitars. I like looking at weird guitars. I like to see them. I don't know if I'd ever buy any of them, but um, you know, I guess I guess the V V shape would have been weird for its day when it came out, or the Explorer. That would have been weird, and, and it took off. So maybe something else will come out that's weird, and then we'll grow accustomed to it. So yeah, well. Um, I'm going to cut this thing short because I've been talking for about 11 minutes now, but um, good to hear about Jack White. I think, like, I didn't really appeal to, um, it might get loud, but, so it was called, it could get loud, but I think having Jack White in that really made that an interesting documentary. It wasn't that interesting for me, but having him in there and, and sort of like just the, um, the difference in the musicians that were, that were there, you know, that he he sort of made the movie for me because I'm not a Jimmy Page fan. I'm, I don't like The Edge whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I don't really like The White Stripes that much, but um, Jack White's the, the main character in that documentary that appealed to me. And I didn't realise that Meg White was his wife. People kept telling me that was his sister. Oh, I just feel weird. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks again for a fantastic episode. And I'll leave you with a picture of the chicks. Catch you guys next time.